Welcome to a lesson on the use of while loops. So previously we learned how to do iteration using recursion. Um, now we're going to learn how to do it in a different way. It's far more common in most programming languages to use loops than it is to use recursion. And the while loop is basically the simplest of loops that we could use. So let's go ahead and start a script. And the basic syntax of a while loop is to use the while keyboard, follow it with parentheses, and then inside of here you put a condition. And this can be any expression that it evaluates to the uh, Boolean type. So if I were an integer, we could do something like i less than 10. If we had some Boolean value, flag, uh, we could say while the flag, and, and flag would be true. Uh, while if we had a method or a function we were checking, should keep going. Oh, uh, we could do something like that. And this is followed by an uh, statement or an expression. And typically, we'll put this inside of curly braces. Uh, if you only have one thing, you don't technically need them, but most of the time you won't. So, in order to demonstrate the usage of this, we will write a function function very similar to what we've seen before and I want to count up and we'll pass in oops, a number, the highest value, how high we're going to count and this counting will work as a print statement I'm going to declare a variable in here We'll call it i. And I will start off as 0. So my condition in here is to say while i is less than or equal to the highest value. As long as that is true, I want to print the value of i. And I also need to make sure that I remember to make i bigger. I can do this using i equals i plus 1. Um, in this usage, this would be fine. We only refer, i only has one letter in the variable name. However, if this were a long variable name, um, you'd wind up having to type it twice, and that gets annoying. For that reason, There's a shorthand syntax, this works in Scala and many other programming languages, where you put the operator in front of an equal sign, and you can actually use whatever operator you want. You can use minus equals, times equals, here we're using a plus equals, and this takes the value in the variable, performs the binary operation of our value plus one in this case, and then stores it back in. And so we can call this and pass in 10 and run our script and it will print out 0 through 10 for us. If I wanted it to start counting at 1 I could have changed this to 1. Some things to note about the while loop. The while loop is one of the few uh, constructs in Scala that is not an expression. It is a statement only. We can do things with the while loop. It will not give us back a value. Um, so for that reason, you have to do some form of mutation inside of here. You either need to be printing a line for the side effects, or you need to be altering values, or something along those lines, but you cannot say val stuff equals. There is nothing coming out of the while loop, so that does not make sense in Scala. The other thing to note is that we have a var here, and we typically try not to use the var. In this case, we need to because the condition in the while loop is something that has to change. 
we have to have something, once again, that mutates. If I were a val, this condition here would be, if it were true to start with, it would remain true forever, in which case we would have an infinite loop. If it were false to start with, this would never happen. And so we'd have one of those two possibilities and not what we want, which is for this to happen a select number of times. Um, when you're tracing through a while loop, you basically, when you get to the while loop, you look at this conditional and you say, is it true or false? So we start off with i here being 0. And we say is 0 less than the highest value. So when we call the highest value with 10, the answer is definitely yes. So that expression is true. And it prints out 0, and then it adds 1. So the i becomes 1. Is 1 less than 10? Yes. Print 10. i goes to 2. Is 2 less or equal to 10? Yes. Print, etc., etc., etc. And it will continue reevaluating this until it is false. And as soon as it's false, control exits below the while loop, and in this case it also leaves the function. We can also use a while loop for reading in values. Um, we did this with recursion as well. Let's say I wanted to build a list of words. So I'm going to combine our while loop with list capabilities. And the thing is, I don't know how many words they're going to type in, all I know is that they're going to keep typing in words until they type in the word quit. So I have a method here called build list. It returns a list of strings. Notice that I didn't pass anything in. Uh, that's because we're going to take all of our input from standard in. And the way this is going to work is I'm going to start off once again with a var and let's call this var line and set it equal to read line. Now while line is not equal to quit I want to keep going here. Now what should happen inside of here? Well I want to append line onto some list. I don't have a list right now. We should make one. Var lst equals, and I'm going to make it so it is a list of string with nothing inside of it. When we're done, that list is what I want to give back. So I'll put it at the bottom. And inside of here, lst cons equals line. And we can also use the cons just like we did the plus up here to append something on. If you do not like seeing it that way, you can certainly say lst equals line cons lst. There's one more thing we have to remember to do in here. Once again, remember this condition has to have the ability to change. Currently, we read the line right here and it never changes, in which case this loop will either go an infinite number of times or zero times. We don't want that. We need to read in another line down here. Line equals read line. And to check that this works, we can say val build list, uh, sorry, words equals build list put in a prompt so the user knows what, we're st what we want them to do. Enter words on separate lines. Type quit. And done. Notice I backslashed my quotes here because we are inside of a normal string and this quote would have ended our string if I hadn't backslashed it. I could not do that by using a raw string and putting three open quotes. We can print line words there. Then go back over to this side.
and we can see that we built that. Now, at this point, what we are getting back is the words we typed in, but they're in reverse order because the cons always appends to the front. We could make this, there are operators we could use to append to the back instead of doing the prepend onto the front. However, they're much less efficient. And for that reason, if you want to have the list come out in the same order they typed things in, it is much better to call reverse on the list. And so if we run this again, enter the same input, now we get it out in the order that it was typed in. And that is more efficient even calling this reverse at the end than it would be if we were constantly adding to the end in here. So this gives you a brief introduction to the while loop. You should go try writing some of the code that you wrote earlier using recursion for doing repetition. See if you can produce the same effects in the while list uh, or using a, uh, a while loop. And I'll see you again soon.